In the last video I made a pentagraph and now I can focus on the base. First I connect the piece of marine plant at the school workshop that I'll be using for the base. One thing I learned from filming at school is that you get some very interesting shots. And this will be for the plunge base that I will be mounting the pentagraph on. I'm not cutting the corners off just yet so that I can still use it as a reference edge. I can then for the first time unwrap the very very expensive and hard earned linear bearings past the halfway point. to keep the barrels perfectly parallel to each other, I wanted to cut a piece of wood to the exact length of the distance between the two rails and then rip that down the middle so that I have two identical pieces that I can put on both ends of the rails and then keep them aligned at all times. However, that requires the teacher to actually do that for me because the ripping action needs to use a rip fence and I actually need the teacher to do it. So instead, I'm going to use a piece of melamine which actually doesn't require the Teacher can help me rip it down to width. Well, you know, life is great when you have two calipers. Since the school didn't have any clamps with a very deep throat, I had to improvise a little bit. To mark out the hole locations for the rails, I'm using a corresponding diameter drill bit and tapping it with a hammer to mark out the center. And before I'm clamping everything, I marked out the edges I used as a reference so that the measurements are repeatable. I'm drilling a pilot hole to run an M6 tap through. With the first rail secured down, I can use that as a reference for my spaces to locate the outer rail. Much like the first rail, I marked out the hole location with a drill bit and drilled a pilot hole for an M6 tap. I've got two screws each on both rails and I've got the piece of wood to make them parallel and so far they seem pretty good with just a little bit of play on this one but I think that same amount of play happens on this one as well so I should be good and next I can draw out the rest of the holes and tap them as well Back in my workshop, I put in the rest of the screws for the linear guide rails. With the first rail secured down, I can secure the other one using the spacers. Once that was done, I can calmly unbox the linear bearings to check for accuracy. I've set up my dial indicator to check how parallel this is. And so far, I am about 0.15 millimeter off. And I'm not sure whether I can live with that or not, but let's just check the two faces first before doing anything else. And this face is even better. I'm pretty much dead on. Probably about 0.05 millimeter off, but. I think I can live with this one. Therefore, I adjusted the parallelism of the linear guide rails to the same tolerance as its flatness. And now this is pretty much perfect. Yep. To locate the screw holes for the linear bearings, I'm just going to use the dimensions on my drawings, which should be accurate enough since I'm going to adjust this piece of wood to adapt to the base. And then just double checking to make sure the linear bearings are in the right place. I'm using a false note bit first to create a camera sink for the bolts that I'm going to use. And then using a slightly oversized drill bit to drill out the through hole.
With the plunge brace working, I can start focusing on the pentagraph matching blocks. I've marked out the hole locations for the shafts to go through, and these holes need to be perfectly perpendicular. And I expect myself to actually mess it up a few times because even Matthias Wano messed it up a few times. Well, I know from experience that sometimes this piece of MDF messes up how perpendicular it is, so I'm taking it off. I'll be rotating the workpiece while drilling through so to counter any inaccuracy in the drill press. Well, not bad for my first try. This one is absolutely flush with the rail with no visible gaps whatsoever. And this one has just a little bit of gap at the end. That's about the thickness of one piece of paper. And I can easily close that with just a bit of finger pressure like that. Now I can screw down these two blocks of wood to secure the pentagraph. But I still need to make the two spring cams so that I can get the correct spacing between the two blocks. Well, not the most elegant setup ever, but it sure does do the job of checking whether I am parallel. And I don't think I am. I think I am off by quite a bit. Probably half a millimeter. I've taken all the bolts out except for one bolt per bearing, and I've been fiddling with it for half an hour. And I think I'm fairly close to what Matthias got, which is pretty much just perfect. As you can see, I am about 0.05 of a millimeter off, which is not bad. Now that I know it's possible to get this perfect, I'm going to cut out the piece of wood here that will make room for the table, and also file out some of the holes that just won't fit. And yes, I know it's heartbreaking. Finishing the cut with a saw and a chisel. And while I have the plunge base off, I can machine some hardwood to act as positive stops for the linear bearing. I made a little dado here so that when the bearing contacts, it doesn't hit the plastic and instead hits the bearing itself. Got the plunge base put back together and now I am about 0.1 millimeter off but I'm not gonna fuss with this too much just yet at least not until the final assembly. With the pentagraph mechanism on the plunge base it is still quite heavy to lift up considering that the router alone is 7 kilograms so in order to compensate for the weight I'm going to add some extension springs.
With the springs added, it is now a lot easier to lift up, but still not as easy as I imagine it would be. But at least now it goes in this direction and this direction. So in the next video, I'll show you how I made the table and also the template holder.